So the Radex filter that we described before, the filter in here is a filter cartridge. So what you need to do every 90 days, whether it's been used or not, replace the filter. Because it's a coalescing filter, it works of its own volition anyway. So irrespective of whether you've got air going through there or not, the primary function of it is, the coalescing filter, is to remove contaminants from within the environment. So with the ports open, it'll continue to work. If you don't use an air prep when utilising this piece of equipment, it will diminish its filter life, so it cuts the filter life in half. So instead of changing it every three months or 90 days, you'll be changing it every 45 days. So primarily because the coalescing filter can't cope with moisture. And I reiterate, this valve here, when in use, has to be cracked open to allow the moisture to escape from within this vessel. So to remove the filter, you've got four bolts here. What have I done? Remove the primary air. So I cannot possibly undo this if there's air attached to this. So the primary air is removed and the whip check, everything's taken off it so that no one can initiate air into this whilst I'm working on it. So there's four bolts. Now the bolts themselves have got nylock nuts on them. So it's a bit of a process to undo it all. You can use a socket if you wish to. And take each bolt out, keep the washers because they need to be replaced. You can see there's a flat space there for the washer. It's there for a reason to help it pull the body down because the body of this is cast aluminium. So if you use, torque these bolts up too tight, you'll split the aluminium housing. The other feature of this particular unit too is that uh, it has a, four lugs at the bottom of it, but also too, for wall mounting, this particular base will slide off there if you depress the dog clips and you can clip it onto the side here for wall mounting as well. Additionally, the CO2 monitor does attach to this bracket uh, availability as well. So it's a multifunctional tool. This one here has six outlets on it, of course. And with the six outlets, it's important to also keep them clean. So what I suggest you do if you're going to store this particular unit, get a plastic cap that fits over these fittings or alternatively tape them up. When it is in the abrasive environment, it pays to blow these fittings out, especially around the edge because these return clips have got ball bearings in them and a spring. So ultimately the grit, the gritty environment will build up or has the possibility to build up within those fittings. Also on the top of this you'll notice there's the outlets and a pressure gauge, but additionally there is a pressure relief valve. So it's important when you remove this lid to check that pressure relief valve to make sure it's, there's no corrosion building up underneath it, although it is brass, but you can see here now how clean this is. So there's an O-ring. This O-ring seals onto the cartridge filter. And of course, that is the primary entry port for that relief valve. So what you need to do every time you remove this is just check to see if that's clear and clean. There's nothing stuck in there so that that pressure relief valve does work. So this item here, place it to one side. Now what I have is the cartridge itself. Now you see it has a series of holes in the flange so that it appropriates the four holes I have there irrespective of where I put place it in the unit. So the four holes line up and I put the lid back on with the four bolts once I've replaced this filter cartridge. Now, this will come in a plastic bag. So the filter won't work until you release it from the plastic bag or cut the plastic bag and allow air to um, violate these ends of the filter. So when you get a new one, try not to open the plastic bag until you need the unit, because it is sealed off and won't work until it's open to the environment. When I say it won't work, it's not contaminated with alternate uh, aspects of the environment. 
because it's housed within a plastic bag. So what do we do with the filter once we've removed it? Well, it's discarded in the appropriate manner and a new one's put in there. Now, this is a small pressure vessel. And as I mentioned earlier, what I do every time that I replace the filter in here is I wash this housing out. So I use this uh, diluted solution of sodium hypochloride, which is bleach. Just wipe it out with some bleach. Wear gloves, please. And once I've uh, given it a good wipe out, open this valve completely, rinse it out several times, wipe it out. You can even blow, blow it dry, make sure it's clean. No debris left in the bottom of it. But every time I take this cartridge out, it gives me an indication of two things. One is, has there been any moisture in there? Because it's an aluminium housing, it can grow aluminium oxides in there. So if there's oxides growing in there, just look and see if there's a white, dusty, crusty powder in there, which is aluminium oxides. It denotes that there has been moisture in there. So if there's moisture in there, go and find the reason why I have moisture in. What is putting moisture in there? Is it because I'm not venting this valve? The other thing to remember is if I leave it overnight and that valve's closed, Moisture will build up in that if there's been warm air in that during the day. It's been sitting in the sun, so it'll tend to sweat. So overnight, I open that valve completely and store it in a clean, dry environment. Make sure you wipe it out nice and clean. The, filter, the new filter cartridge, they should make a little shaking sound. That sh shows that the coalescing filters hasn't been... Um, exposed to the elements and it's ready to go back in. So how do I line that up? Well, basically all you need to do is look around the flange until you get the four bolts to line up. So just ensure that they are lining up nice and square. So if you're not happy with that, just turn it around one more time and keep turning it around until you get them to line up appropriately. And there you are. That's the one I'm after. One, two, three, four. So just square it up make sure it's in the right position. Now, this O-ring here, what I suggest you do is a, a small amount of Vaseline, and when I say a small amount, a tiny amount of Vaseline, what that does is that keeps the O-ring supple and ensures that it'll seal on the surface. So this is an indication of how much, I, how much Vaseline I'd use on this, just a minor amount. So one dab, two dabs, and then smear that around. So as you can see, there's hardly any Vaseline on there whatsoever. But it's enough to keep that O-ring supple for me. Do I need to pull that out to do that? No, it's just on the surface. So that what you're doing is when you're sliding it and spinning it around, there's a good chance that it won't grab on this, pick up, and you can actually tuck it under outside the, the ring, land, ring gland itself. So the reason why we do that, there it is there. So if you, the other reason too is if you put too much Vaseline on, that'll just keep sliding around and you'll have difficulty. So it's just on the face of it to make it slip on this when you turn this around looking for the holes. That's the only reason we do that. And then of course, check your bolts, the threads on your bolts to ensure they're okay. And what's the wear factor on my nylon nut? A nylon nut, as previously described, should come up and pinch on the primary thread so that the lock mechanism itself is retained within the nylon on this side of the head. So for example, I was screwing that on and it just screwed up the thread freely, I'd look at replacing that nylon nut. You are only supposed to use them once or twice and then replace them. So when you order a filter, you can ask for four new bolts and nuts and away you go again. So just so for example, I put that on there. Oh, hang on a minute, the holes have moved. What do I do? Just drag it around like so. So what I've done now is by putting the bolt in the hole is that I've dragged the whole lot around the filter. So what did I say about remembering to put back on? All the washers. As you see the washer spreads the torque of the head of the bolt over a greater distance. So look what can happen easily. See look I forgot to put that washer back on. Make sure you put the washers on, slide them back in like so. Now when you torque these back up, it's important now that I torque them, torque them up in a diagonal 
sequence. So I'll put this one on here because if I go around one, two, three, four, and go around in a clockwise or counterclockwise direction, what you can actually do is tighten this up to such a degree that it spreads or distorts the aluminium housing on the alternate side. So the consequence of that will be it will leak air. So do your nylocks up until they stop. Another washer and nut, like so. If any of these fittings have been compromised, you need to replace them. So it's not a matter of, oh, well, I'll fix it next time. Do it while you've got it undone, because remember this is a small pressure vessel. So you're harnessing air within a small environment. That's what we class as a pressure vessel, of course. So with your spanners, I'll get it right in a minute. Do them up until they nip and away we go. So which way do we do this? Oh, hang on, I've forgotten. Well, it's righty tighty, lefty loosey, simple as that. So the way I'm going, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull this nut up. There we go, it's just bitten and that's all. So turn it around the diagonal opposing side and repeat that. So by doing it this way, you're not distorting the aluminium housing. So what you were doing in actual fact is releasing the inertia through two different areas. So this one here, all I'm going to do is just nip it up. If I over tighten it, I could split the housing. So bring it up until it touches. There you are, touched back around the other side. So as you can see, it only takes a few minutes to replace these, but you need to remember also to give it a wipe out with sodium hypochloride, a weak solution of bleach, that's what that is. So go back to the initial bolts, tighten them back up again. If you're worried about the sequence in which you've doing them up, just put a mark on them. So back over to that one. Now that I've done that, I'll just go back to these, make sure they're tight, like so, because remember, if you pulled it apart, you're responsible for its correct operational procedure and the safety of others because you've worked on this. So there you go, that's replacing the Radex inline air filter.